the only the only thing I have a concern about that some of this money is being designated for painting and repair. Uh, flowers, I don't people have told me how ugly they look in town, but Amy and I looked at them today. I think they look pretty nice, but I, I don't know if we're going to have South Whitley next wanting uh, some money, if so. But maybe in the future we need to, because of the county's money, we need to look at the future, say, in next year, that we don't allocate this much money to each one. I do the fact we have given Columbia City $500, but I don't want to get into where the county gives money to the city or Bosco or Larwell or Whitley for repair of their buildings or things. I think we're opening it up, but if they want it for something that is seasonal, of course I guess the turtle only comes out once a year, but you understand where I'm coming from on that. But I would have no problem to the fact we gave Columbia City $500 this year to do the you same. You could make it more specific and say flowers because that's what it was for here in Columbia City. So you could say for flowers. But how would we know if they bought flowers or paint? And I'm not going to be that petty when I ask an itemized okay. statement from Mr. Kessler. <laughs> okay. That's just, that's just my feeling, Mr. Chairman. If you oh, yeah, feel no, differently, no. that's fine. That'd no, be, you know, we can agree to disagree. No, I'm, I'm fine. I just, I just don't want to get in a part of where we're buying paint to do windows or putty or stuff. So. I would agree with Commissioner Rutherlake that maybe next year we need to, or for this year's budget, we need to take a look at that. that specifically, yeah, sure, what we're going to do. Sure. I, I would agree with that. What do you want to do with? With Mr. Kessler's request. Well, I'll make a motion if you want, Mr. Chairman, if we do allocate five hundred dollars to town chair busco for flowers. I don't want to designate, so I'll say ETC. Okay. For this year. A motion. Second. Motion second. Discussion. All in favor raise your right hand. Those same sign. I don't know that I have anything I can get through. Cindy, are you ready? Sure. Okay. Um, let me give you a little a little background why you're here. Okay. okay. We've, we've had, in fact, it happened the day I think before you got here. Uh, <clears throat> between the commissioners, we go through claims. It's just not something that was ever really done before. Just in the past, why claims were brought to the commissioners, commissioners meeting, and you approved them or not. Now we're kind of going through the claims, just, okay. just see what's there. And and um, we discovered a, a claim uh, uh, from an organization or a request for one hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars, and and. We did we didn't understand what it was all about. And so we just simply asked them to come in and explain it to us, and they did. Kind of simultaneously, there was a claim to you guys for $39,000. And, yeah, I mean, I, I know it's on the budget, but I guess we're just starting to ask people that today there's a claim for passages. And so we'll be asking them to come in, too. Just simply explain to, to us. I know you do for the council, because they, you go to the council to get your money. <laughs> And, and so I guess we had we had a couple of questions. I'll tell you what my questions were. Was one um, exactly what is the thirty-nine thousand dollars for professional fees? Okay, and two um, a, re, a reminder that uh, we require any mileage we pay here in the county, we require to be map questioned. And submit the map quest, and we don't see that with any of you guys' mileage claims. Okay. So, besides that, then just sort of explain to the commissioner. George is new. I've only been here three years, and and just explain to us the extension office, I guess. And how long do I have? You have half hour. <laughs> <laughs> the the thirty nine thousand is for 
a contractual agreement between Purdue University and Whitley County. Um, there's one of these agreements in every county in Indiana, um, and, and we are also, also a nationwide organization. So there's an extension office in every single county in every state. The extension office is always connected with the land-grant university in that particular state. And in our state, that is Purdue University. So the contractual service basically says that Purdue University will put in X number of educators into a county office for a specific amount of money. Um, and, and with that, um, with that contractual service, the, the educators are Purdue University employees that all have at least a master's degree. And they are assigned to work in the area of agriculture, um, health and human sciences, leadership and community development, and or 4-H youth development. According to the state of Indiana, each county is to have at least two educators. One must be trained in ag and natural resources, and the other one must be trained in health and human sciences. In our case, Dave Addison has a degree in agriculture, and my degree was in home economics, which has gone through several name changes, but is now health and human sciences. The 4-H program, to the surprise of many people, is actually an optional program. It, it is still run through the same organization, but according to Indiana, we only have to have two educators per county. One Ag, one Health and Human Sciences, and then 4-H is optional. Okay. Most counties have three educators. Most of them have one for Ag, most of them have one for Health and Human Sciences, most of them have a full-time youth educator. In Whitley County, as of the budget um, 2010, uh, we were downsized to two <coughs> educators. Val Slack, who was our ag educator, retired in August of 2009. Um, so when our 2010 budget came up, we were not granted, granted the full amount for our contract, so our office went to two educators. So at that time, Dave Addison was doing full-time youth work, and I was doing full-time health and human sciences work. <coughs> With the loss of one position um, and with the guidance of county council saying get the, pro get the 4-H program done. So what we ended up doing was Dave went to half time, doing half time youth work and then half, he picked up the ag work. So he's doing half youth and half ag. I also became office manager um, at the time that Val retired. So then my workload became um, health and human sciences and 4-H work as well as the um, office head position. Okay. So as far as the dollar amounts, here's a, the chart. This is our 2012 chart. When Purdue went to contractual services several years ago, they came up with a formula, and it was based upon number of families, number of farms, number of youth, median income. Here, Jim, I have one for you, too. Several different things, and counties then were put into three different categories. Okay. Um, Whitley County is in group number one, so population-wise, were most of the smaller counties. Okay, and then as you go up to two and three, those are the larger counties and the price goes up. So for 2012, we were in category one and the cost per educator was $19,730. Okay, so that, that's the contract that Purdue has with all of these counties that are listed in, in the, the category one. Um, so with that, we are Purdue employees, Purdue play, pays all benefits, and then we are basically assigned to a county. Okay. Now, for just as an FYI, for 2013, we just got our figures. Um, it's 
going up like four hundred dollars more next year. Sort of like this year, then. yeah. But we had at the last year is the first year that they had asked for an increase in about three years. So anyway, so so for next year, then it's going to be nineteen thousand nine hundred and and thirty dollars per educator. How does Martin and Union get by with one educator when the law says they have to have two? Be, they have um, a person trained that is maybe has two degrees, um, and or there are several counties that sh some of those smaller counties that share educators, and Martin is one of those. They have three educators that service their county, but they're not necessarily housed in Lyme County. I'm going to tell you right up front, I've learned more in the last five minutes than I've known in the three years I've been here. Great. I, I, I seriously, I did, okay. not, did not know exactly how this works. Okay. But. Now, as far as, I think you had asked me, Don, too, about the, the billing part of it, um, about uh, Purdue usually sends out the bills in April. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, the timing, the timing right, of it. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I, I, right. I talked to our business manager at Purdue, mm -hmm. and, and that is what they have worked out with the State Board of Accounts, is Perfect. that every county is billed in April. Perfect. And then... As long as, that, as, long as that's been taken care okay. of and the State Board of Accounts doesn't see it as prepayment, that's, that's perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's, what that's the big, yeah, that's the big deal for okay. us is, is prepaying. You can't pay ahead. Right, especially right. when it comes to like salaries. Sure. So, sure. Um, so that's 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 good. Okay, that's good. And I, I can address Milo. Is she having questions on that part of it? On the, on the well, let's just go back to the top for a second, real, real quick, the, okay. uh, of what I see. So, so you have uh, in the office then what I see budgeted is a secretary, secretary, program assistant. Extension assistant. Yes. Okay. So what can you just give me kind of a quick rundown of what those positions are? Okay. It looks like the extension assistant's new. Yes, we've had that position. Um, this will be our third year now. Um, the, right. And and when we were downsized our full educator position, then county council gave us. $20,000 to uh, hire part-time. And until this year, that money had been kept in the county general fund. And then this year it's put into our budget. Um, our secretary, Janet Heinbaugh, is also our um, office manager, our bookkeeper. She's full-time. Secretary number one is Lisa Schrader. Uh, Lisa does mostly 4-H work, and she does also all of the booking of the fairgrounds. It's kind of like the K position? Yes, okay. yes, yeah, the, okay. the position K had. Okay. Some are program assistants. We have two college kids that come in as soon as they're out of college. They stay through about the first week of August or so. Um, their responsibility is 90% 90, 90 getting us ready for the 4-H fair. And then our extension assistant is at 29 hours a week. Shaman Wool, and she just started last week. All right. Gloria Reimer was in that position for a little over a year. Two years, two years. Yeah, okay. And she left in March. So, as far as Purdue is concerned, you're their employee, but anything, do they provide anything else except for, it looks like we provide everything else for the office itself. And that's the only thing that you're an employee, I mean, they provide your benefits. Right. Okay. Um, they provide all of our training, all of our professional development. They also provide the T1 line that comes into our office for all of our computer works. Um, they maintain the mainframe of our computer on, on campus also. But the professional development is a big part of what they also provide. Um, we're required to 12 to 15 days a year of professional development so that we stay current in, re in our research, and they provide that. How many hours are 
you at here at Whitley County? How many what? Hours are you here at Whitley County? I'm full time. You're full time. Yes. Here. She's only Whitley County. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Dave and I are only Whitley County. Right. Yeah, the bulk mailings, um, are, are most of the bulk mailings just for 4-H or for... The bulk mailing is our newsletter. Okay. We send out a newsletter nine times a year, and it has information in it on all of our program areas. So we don't send out separate letters, separate postcards, um, any, any program that we have going on, it goes in the newsletter. And then that's how we communicate with all of our families. Do you, does anyone pay attention to where they're going? You know, I, I get it. Mm -hmm. I receive it. I don't know if I'm supposed to be on the list, but mm -hmm. I do yes, receive you are. it. And, and that is why. Is that as a commissioner? As a commissioner, <laughs> yes, so that okay. you kind of know what we're doing okay. since you help. I personally find it interesting. Okay, great. I, I, I look at it. Okay. I, I just want to make sure we're not sending them to homes where they're going straight to the blue container. So I, I, I don't think I end up there. But. You know, we, we, we hope to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, and we have volunteers that come in and do all the labeling and do all the folding and everything of, of the newsletter. And as they say, they've moved, they died. You know, whatever we we do pull them, um, and each year we do try to update with all of our council, our commissioners, our town councils. Uh, we try to keep all that information updated. Any other questions? Yeah. No. Let me address mileage. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, can okay. can can you do that? I mean, that's what, a what we have. But we do. Um, let me find my form here. We have, our mileage goes to Purdue first. Yes, we do this on a reimbursement basis. Yes, right, here we go. And so what we have to do is we have to uh, put down, all of our mileage starts and stops at the office, and then we have to put down why we're traveling. We have to put down our odometer sure. reading. Okay. There is a chart that is, it's kind of our Whitley County chart that is approved mileage. So that we know every time we go to Cherubusco, we claim 11 miles one way. Okay. Every time we go to South Whitley, we it's claim 11 miles. It's not odometer driven then. Pardon? It's not odometer driven Well, then. originally that's where those, those approved miles came sure. from. Sure, sure. If it currently, sure. if we're going somewhere that currently is not on the chart, then we do have to include MapQuest mileage okay. to prove okay. where we're going. Okay. And okay. if Purdue ever okay. questions our mileage, then that's what they also use is, is MapQuest. Okay. So. And then our mileage is paid based upon what the county pays versus what Purdue pays. Because right. Purdue so always pays the federal rate. It does follow the, 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 the county. county. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I appreciate inf that information. So, um, I, for one, have, have been enlightened. Thank you very much. Okay. That's all this was, was gee whiz, we just, you know, we're responsible to taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And it's like, sure. the taxpayer asked me what the $39,000 for, I, I, I could not have told them. I did not okay. know. But, okay. but it's um, professional services, I guess, is good, but, 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 Educators would be more descriptive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I probably didn't write this. So. Well, let me, since I'm here, let me share with you. This is a copy of our annual meeting report. It just kinds of a, a brief um, synopsis of some of the programming that we do. Um, just a, a brief description with a little bit of impact. Because we are very impact driven. Um, everything we do has to show some kind of impact. People are changing behaviors. We are making a difference. 